Hi again, and this is Keith Townsend from the virtualizegeek.com. We're going to take a look at a pretty simple lab today, but it will answer a lot of questions that I get offline about how many virtual machines you can run on a single uh, laptop or within your lab. So we'll take a look at my lab. I have a Dell SPS 15. The model from last year is an L50X. Uh, has an Intel i7-2630 processor which runs at 2 gigahertz. I have upgraded the machine to 16 gigabytes of RAM. It has a 750 gig hard drive that runs at 7200 RPM. So we'll look, take a look and see what type of performance we can get out of this machine. The first thing we'll look at is how much memory we're taking up prior to running any virtual machines that you can see right now CPU is uh, running between 7 and 11 percent and we're currently using 3.33 gigabytes of the available RAM. So the first thing that we did was create clones of an XP image that I had created earlier. We created link clones, clones 1 through 10 currently. If my machine can run more than that we'll create more clones and see where it breaks. So what we'll do first is we'll fire up our task manager, keep that running in the background, and we'll power up each virtual machine one by one and see the impact on our system resources. So we're powering up the first XP clone. We powered up our first XP clone and as we can see, we've assigned this XP clone one gig of RAM and one CPU. And let's see what the impact is on our workstation's physical resource. Now we're using 4.56 gig of RAM versus the 3.33 that we started out with. And CPU is pretty much holding steady. Let's fire up the second machine. So the second machine has been booted up and now we see we're using 5.5 gigabytes of RAM and again CPU utilization is staying in between 9 and basically 12 percent. We'll fire up the third machine. Okay we now have three virtual machines running each with a gig of RAM and one CPU and as you can see CPU utilization is pr staying pretty steady but RAM usage is pretty much incrementing in the one gigabyte in a little bit less than one gigabyte increments. We'll go ahead and power up our fourth virtual machine. So our fourth virtual machine has been powered up and again RAM is at 7.3 gig used and our CPU again staying steady. I think we can see the linear the linear nature of our resource utilization and see that RAM is most definitely going to be our bottleneck. If you had a system with only 8 gig of RAM, I would say that this would be the breaking point of four virtual machines. Let's uh, continue to push the envelope. So we have our fifth virtual machine running and we're at 8.5 gig used and 13% CPU utilization. Let's keep going. So we now have 10 virtual machines running, all with one gig of RAM and one CPU. Again, CPU utilization is a fraction of our overall system capability. What we're seeing consistently that the issue isn't how much CPU that you have. If you have a modern day uh, Intel VT CPU or AMD V CPU, uh, you can run quite a few VMs but the limitation becomes disk I.O. and memory. I have a, in my labs practically, even though we have 10 VMs running, uh, I usually see the bottlenecks in my system and <clears throat> actually using the VMs. If there's any disk intensive activities happening on any of these virtual machines, then my system, even with the overhead of having another uh, two and a half gig of RAM available to the system, or rather three and a half gig of RAM available to the system, 
I still see per performance degradation because my hard drive is basically thrashing like crazy and I need a faster hard drive. My next upgrade to this system will be an SSD drive, which I think I should be able to get a fairly decent amount more of uh, capacity out of running virtual machines. In addition, I'll be able to uh, practically use these virtual machines. For these and other tips, you can visit virtualizegeek.com and uh, visit my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. And